and then do that again. Good morning. Mm -hmm. Nice to be with you. I really enjoy my sabbatical time, but I also really enjoy coming back to see you all. You will want a yoga strap for class this morning. I really enjoy my personal practice, especially in the winter in the dark with the candles, which I do before I come to this class. And I also enjoy sharing a physical practice with you. Uh, so yeah, thanks for rounding out my morning. It's really an honor. Right now we're doing an immersion on the yamas and the niyamas. And our focus, my focus this week is on ahimsa. And I wanna talk about that after we have a short meditation together. So please take a comfortable seat and thank you again for being here. I am bundled up because I don't turn the heat on to warm this room up for two hours before I come in here. I just clicked it on a low level because I'm trying to, as I said yesterday, really think about the resources that I'm using, uh, recognizing that there's shared resources. And we'll talk more about that when we're discussing Mitahara um, and also anything with the climate. But I'm just kind of feeling it out. What, what amount of resource do I actually need to, to be here? Uh, so yes, I'm bundled up at the moment. And I kind of enjoy the, <laughs> the texture of bundling up too. Um, so please take your comfortable seat. You can rest your hands in your lap. You're welcome to close your eyes. And locate your plumb line, your center line. Not making any effort, notice the naturalness of the breath. So no effort to breathe, only the effort for attention. Notice. Bring that noticing to a very specific place. We've been focusing on where the air coming through the nasal passages touches the upper back of the throat. So narrow your attention down to that small GPS, a place to be grounded, to be present, to be stable. You're going to come to notice what capacity you right now have for concentration, for your mental concentration. Just 
and creating is the sixth limb of yoga, and it is dependent upon the limbs that precede it, including the yamas. Our capacity for concentration begins with ahimsa, the first yama. And the practice of ahimsa shapes how we concentrate. Listen inside with a felt sense of how, what is the attitude of your concentration? You can slowly bring in the ujjayi breath, like you're turning a volume knob very slowly up. And try to sense the place where it's the just right amount of the ujjayi. Sense that just right amount, there'll be a smooth inhale, the silence of the pause, the smooth exhale, the silence of the pause. And your attention is going to have these three components that help us to understand how effective is our yoga going to be. And those three components are the consistency of your attention, the duration, and the intensity. What level of intensity? what level of duration, what level of consistency. felt sense of all of that, please join your hands to your heart. And we'll chant Atatoma Sadgamaya. Om Atatoma Sadgamaya Tamasoma Jyotir Gamaya Red Yorma Amritam Gamaya Oh Atatama Sad Gamaya Namasoma Jyotir Gamaya Red Yorma Amritam Gamaya Oh Asatoma Sad Gamaya Amasoma Jyotir Gamaya Red Yorma Amritam Gamaya Oh Shanti 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 Hari Om Shri Guru Pyo Namaha Hari Om 
perhaps the quality of your listening in the aftermath of the chant. And then please bow your head to your heart. Release your hands and open your eyes if you'd like. So one of the translations of ahimsa, as I said yesterday, is nonviolence. But I like to think of it before we get to that place as the absence of harm. Not only the absence of violence, but the absence of harm. Sometimes we think of things in terms of violence, such as um, the outward expression of physical violence or um, verbal violence or the outward expression of exploitation of people or resources or um, shared experiences, the exploitation process that we see in our, our culture, our dominant culture here in the global north. Those are extreme forms of violence, but the subtle form we have to catch in its early kind of inception. Most of us missed that because the enculturation here has in our world has normalized certain kinds of violence or um, harm. For example, the harm of not listening, the harm of not really listening. And we start that process with our own bodies. We are cultured into that, a kind of non-listening, you know, um, keep moving or be productive or get the task done or uh, accomplish the assignment even at the expense of your vitality or your presence or your body or your breath or your intuition or your creativity. You know, so we have prioritized a certain mode of being and that does kind of um, acclimate us to the next levels of harm or violence on the spectrum. So I'd like us to, to practice something this morning to go back to like an early way of listening to the body, if we could imagine that we're going back to what we call developmental movement. And last night in our yoga therapy mentoring session, we spoke about developmental movement. So this is drawing from that conversation for those of you who are in the yoga therapy trainings. Um, and it's applicable to everyone. We all had developmental movement processes before we became walking, talking creatures as we are right now. So that being said, Let's start, let me just get this. We're gonna start on the back with the knees bent. You'll need a space that you could like make a, a full circle with your arms and a full circle with the legs. And I realize that some of us don't have that much space. Like I'm, I'm limited on space for my legs to make a certain circle here with my um, kitty condo, uh, <laughs> the cat basket. Um, so you can then improvise around what you do have as space. I'm gonna move a couple things here. You don't need the strap right away, but you can put that within reach and let's set the blankets aside. Can you please lie on your back. And let's start with the arms just down alongside the torso. You're gonna synchronize some of these movements with the breath, which was not what you started in your earliest life, but you didn't have that need for synchronizing. It was all improvisation and, and play. But I'd like us to synchronize because it's gonna bring our minds, our thinking minds, our conditioned mind down into the practice more effectively. When you inhale, raise your right arm up towards the ceiling and overhead, turn your head to your left. and then exhale and return your nose and your arm to where you started. And inhale, raise the left arm, slowly turn your head to your right. And exhale to return. Inhale, right, rotate your head to the left. And exhale to return. And left. Notice the naturalness of when you raise the left arm, the, the 
kind of natural urge to turn your head to the left or the right, depending on which arm you're raising. Change the movement slightly. So as you next inhale, raise your left arm, turn your nose to your right. And then exhale, circle the left arm as you bring your head back to center. Inhale, right arm, turn your nose to the left. And exhale, circle the right arm down as you return to your starting position. Now you'll know if there are some objects that are too close. Oh, right. So I do want that circle to be a bit free. And I also wanna keep my microphone within hearing distance for you guys. Okay, let's do the left arm again. Inhale up, turn your nose to the right. And exhale, circle down, come back to center. This time inhale, circle your right arm across your face. And as you rotate your arm down, bring your head to center. Circle the left arm, turn your nose to the right. And exhale to return. Right side. And exhale to return. Left side. Exhale to return. Inhale, sweep the right arm across your face, stretch the right leg out straight. And exhale to return. Inhale, left arm, left leg. And exhale to return. Right. And return. And left. And return. Now bring both knees up. Bring your knees down to the right side of your mat. And take the left hand to the in, uh, sorry, right hand to the inside of your left calf and press your thigh away from you. Straighten your right arm if possible. So that what you have there is you're actually giving some traction through your right arm to your left knee, to your left hip. So that's adding some yoga to this developmental movement. And now take the left arm up. And exhale, circle your arm to the left. Keep your knees really stable. The left arm comes down and then inhale, sweep across and overhead. And exhale, rotate your upper left chest, left arm, your head. Keep the lower body stable. Inhale, sweep across. And exhale, listen into your body. You, you likely have this fanning of sensation moving through because as you're moving your body, the myofascial system is also responding. So in some places you're gonna feel ease in other places you're gonna feel maybe like a, a tugging on the skin or the nerves, muscles. Notice how you're listening. Please do this one more time. And exhale to open. Return onto your side and let's switch to the other. Roll onto your back, bring your knees over to your left side. Take the left hand into the crease of the right calf and knee. And inhale, raise your right arm overhead. Lengthen your right hip and hand away from each other. And exhale, open to your right, keeping your hips, thighs, and knees stable. And then inhale, sweep across again. And listen for the way sensations are 
arriving and also departing. So as you're moving your body, sensations will come on in some of the positions and then sensations will dissolve or evaporate as you move through the position. Let's do it three times more. Exhale to open when you're rotating to your right and inhale, sweep across your face and overhead. One more time. Listen for how you're listening, right? Listen for the attitude of your listener, your inner listener. And then roll your knees back to center, please. Okay, now reach for your yoga strap. And let's put the right foot in the strap, please. With your right hand. Now, often we say, oh, don't tip your hips, you know, when you do this particular practice, excuse me. And um, actually, we're going to start tipped. So I'd like you to bring your right leg down over to the right and that where you're going to be best suited. Let me give you a sense of where I am. So when you come down, where are you going to be best suited for hanging out there? And then pick up the left knee and come over and reach your left hand towards your right foot. And then inhale, raise your left arm and straighten your left leg. And exhale, keep the right toes grounded as you roll to your left. And then roll back, bring your left knee up, left hand towards your right ankle. And inhale. And exhale, roll open. You will not make it all the way to the floor with your left hip because you're gonna keep the right toes grounded. And then exhale, roll back to your starting position. Inhale, reach. Exhale, roll open. Listen for how you're listening. Inhale, breathe through the left hemisphere of the body. And exhale, return. And do this one more time. Inhale to open, stretch the left arm, left leg, keep your right leg and toes stable. Exhale, roll open to your left. Notice that some sensations are arriving and then they are also dissolving. Okay, and then come back to on your back, knees bent. I have to scoot so I have room for my left leg given how long it is. <laughs> okay, so take the left foot up in the strap, please. And then uh, flex the ankle. I didn't say that on the first time, but keep the ankle and the toes strong. As you open your left leg out to the side, rotate externally and bring your toes down to the floor. And then bring the right leg over and reach your right hand towards your left ankle. And then we inhale to open like you're opening a flower bud. Then exhale, roll onto your right side, whatever amount you can, while keeping the left foot grounded. And then exhale, return to the starting position. The inhale, reach. And then exhale, roll. Breathe in, 
Keep the left toes grounded. The top of the toes are on the floor. And then exhale, return to where we started. Again, inhale, reach. And exhale to roll to your right. It's possible that your right hip is not gonna touch the floor. Mine's not touching, that's okay. And then exhale, return. We'll do it one more time. And exhale, open. And then exhale to return. So there's an inhale in between there, of course. And then bend the left knee and come back into your, on your back position, back to your starting position. And let's just pause and notice, okay? What is it like? You're rolling around on the floor, listening, breathing. Listen to the skin of your body for a moment. Can you feel the sort of release or the effervescence of skin to myofascial to muscle? And listen deeper. Imagine you could hear the nerve pathways, the circulation, the inner celebration of your body. It's like, oh, yay, he or she, they're here for the yoga. <laughs> they came back. <laughs> Let's put the strap aside. And please roll to your side. Come on up. Some kneeling. Okay. Now from where you're kneeling, I know some of you will benefit from having a block on the floor for your head to touch in child pose. Sometimes I benefit from that also. Uh, and that means please use a block. Doesn't mean that doesn't mean anything about your worthiness as a yoga student. It just means that you need a block for your head to reach the floor. And then put the two hands behind one resting on the other. Follow your inhale now to rise up to the knees and to look up, make a big circle of the arms. And then exhale, look to your right as you come down and touch the left side of your head to the floor or the block. Inhale, rise up and bring your gaze up. Exhale, look to your left. So you're looking even as you begin to come down. Inhale, gaze left as you rise up. Exhale, gaze right as you come down and try switching which hand is on the bottom or the top on the small of the back. Exhale. Once more in each direction, please. So once more to the right. Once more to the left. Bring your head to center. to kneeling and then shift to table pose. I'd like you to get a block for where we're gonna be practicing. Put it to the side for now, but have it ready in table pose. Inhale to tap. Press into the floor with your paws and stay in cat pose for a few moments here. So you're gonna press down 
one hand on the other and notice how the back of the body responds. Keep the breath smooth. I have a lot of recent experience watching cats. <laughs> Press into both hands again and inhale in your cat pose. And exhale, cow pose. Inhale, raise your left arm and your right leg. And then exhale, return to cat pose. Inhale to cow pose. Exhale, right arm, left leg. Inhale, return to cat pose. Exhale to cow pose. Inhale, left arm, right leg. Exhale, cat pose. Inhale, cow pose. And exhale, left arm, right leg, uh, left leg, right arm, <laughs> sorry. And then inhale to cat. Your teacher does have a brain injury. <laughs> so all forgiveness is appreciated. Exhale, child's pose. And then place a block. So walk your hands to your knees. Put a block for your, I wanna show this, you can see it. Uh, I think I'll do my left hand first. So put the block for the left hand, please. So the left arm is gonna be straight and so is the right arm. And I'm gonna ask you to put this block on the medium setting like it is right now. And that means that this pose is very asymmetrical. So inhale to cat pose. Exhale to cow pose. Inhale, raise your right arm and your left leg. And exhale, right elbow and left knee touching. Inhale, raise your right arm and your left leg. And exhale to cat pose. Keep both arms straight. Inhale to cow pose. Exhale to cat. Inhale backwards towards child's pose. Keep the spine in your cat pose. And then exhale. We're gonna change sides. So place the right block, right hand. Put the left hand on the floor so it's asymmetrical. Yep. Inhale to cat pose. Exhale, cow pose. Inhale, raise your right leg and your left arm. Exhale, left knee, I'm sorry, left elbow and right knee. Inhale, glide forward, left arm, right leg back. Exhale to cat pose. Inhale, cow pose. Exhale to cat. Inhale backwards towards child's pose. Keep your cat pose in your spine. And then exhale, release. And let's put the block one more time under the left hand and come to cat pose. Please breathe in. Exhale, cow pose. Inhale, bird dog pose. That's the name of this. Exhale, knee to elbow. 
Inhale, bird dog. Exhale, knee to elbow. Inhale, bird dog. Exhale, knee to elbow. Inhale, bird dog pose. Exhale, cat pose. Inhale, cow pose. Exhale, cat. Keeping the cat pose fine, reach backwards towards child's pose. And then exhale, release that and put your block over on the other side. And come into cat pose. So keep the elbows straight in the process of the movement and do your best to time the breath and the body together to synchronize. Okay, so inhale in cat pose. Exhale, cow pose. Inhale, bird dog pose. Exhale, knee to elbow. Inhale, bird dog pose. Exhale, knee to elbow. And listen again for how you're listening to sensation. Right? Because some sensations are arriving and then they're evaporating or departing. Once more, bird dog pose. And then exhale to cat pose. So your left hand and your right knee arrive at the same moment. Cow pose. Cat pose. And backwards towards child pose, keeping the cat pose fine. And then release and let's take the block for the forehead in child's pose. Place the elbows near to your knees. Let's do palms face up. Walk your hands towards your knees and please press up to kneeling and reach for a second block. Rise up to standing, please. Come into a mountain pose and just see how things are feeling. Right. So what you might observe in mountain pose when you come into it, uh, first is noticing any way in which you sense that your brain is being yoga. <laughs> What is your ability to have interoception, to sense the inner body, and proprioception, even with your eyes closed, to sense where you are in space? Even with the eyes closed right now, if you make no effort to stand in mountain pose, is there a slight sway or do you feel more still somewhere? So this particular practice you just had would also be really um, helpful for cross hemisphere process in the brain. And some of you might feel more mentally balanced right now or more neurologically balanced. So I wanna take this uh, sensitivity and listening into Surya Namaskar with the sun salutation. where I'd like to be able to touch into if we have the 
balance for it is half moon pose, Art of Chandrasana, because you were doing it on the floor earlier. That's going to mean that you consistently pay attention. You aren't pushing towards the goal of the pose. You're not um, product oriented. You're not in your um, consumer mentality, your exploitation mentality, which I'm not saying that you use a lot. I'm just saying it's, we're susceptible to it. Uh, so step to the front of your mat, join your palms together at your heart. Now bring in the ujjayi breath in. So your focus is gonna go into the upper back of the throat once again, the place where the nasals become the sinus, becomes the throat. On your next inhale, sweep the hands down, wide and up, and please look up. And exhale, look right as you come down and bring your head to center at the bottom. Inhale, look left, rise up. Look up. Exhale, hand to the heart, gaze at your fingertips. Inhale, listening for the focus of the breath in the back of the throat. Exhale, look left as you come down, keep your legs stable. Inhale, gaze right as you rise up. Exhale, hands to the heart. Inhale, gazing straight up. Exhale, Uttanasana, hands to the heart, hands to the floor. Inhale, glide forward. Exhale, left toes back. Listen for the smooth sound of the breath in the back of the throat. Feel the texture of the inhale as you rise into your crescent. Feel the texture of the exhale, open the arms to your right, gaze to your right. I'm sorry, open the arms wide, gaze to your right. Inhale to center. Exhale, open, gaze to your right. Inhale, rise. Exhale, arms wide as you come down, touch the two blocks. Inhale, straighten your right leg, raise the toes like we did yesterday. And then exhale, glide forward and down to Anjane Asana, which is also from yesterday. And inhale, raise up, lift your heart and look up as the thumbs meet. And exhale, big circle of the arms. Listen to the breath as you press into the blocks. Inhale to plank pose. Exhale, downward dog. Feel the breath passing through the back of the throat. Inhale, plank. Exhale, point the toes of one foot and come into seal pose. Point the toes of the other foot. Inhale, lift up, look up. Exhale, plank. Inhale, downward facing dog. Exhale, left foot forward. Inhale, rise up, feeling the breath pass to the back of the throat. Exhale, open the arms, gaze to your left. Inhale, raise up, look up. Exhale, open, gaze left. Inhale, raise up, look up. Exhale, fold forward. 
Inhale, straighten both legs. Raise your left toes. And then we're going to follow the exhale to come down and through into the base of Anjane Asana. Inhale, rise up. Inhale, come down, place your palms firmly. Keep your mind at the back hollow of the throat. Inhale to plank. Exhale, downward dog. Inhale, plank. Exhale, over the toes of the right foot, left foot. Inhale, look up. Exhale, table pose. And child's pose. Keep the hands stretch out over the block, please. And the hips hopefully are touching your heels or they're near to that. You can bow your head towards the floor. We'll roll the inner armpits up towards the ceiling. So the shoulders should not feel like they're crowding the base of your neck right now. And then walk your hands back towards your knees. And I'm gonna ask you to watch here and I'm gonna share with you me doing this for the first time since my hip replacement. So I'll show you on my left leg because you're gonna have a better view on the left. And I wanna give you a way to explore what we did on the floor, but now upright. Okay, so um, I don't feel concerned about showing you. I just think you can accept some apprehension or clumsiness if you see it in my body. So if we start in the base here and we walk the blocks forward so that the blocks make a tripod between your two hands and your left foot, it's an equilateral triangle. So the left block is not in line with the foot, it's over to the side. And then we're gonna step forward into this knee to chest position where we were before we were on the floor. We're gonna do that before you take the leg back. And then you can keep the hands on the blocks to rotate your pelvis up. The pelvis goes over the left leg. It doesn't push your left leg sideways. From there, you lift the right hand, turn the belly, turn the pelvis, turn the mid belly, the rib cage, the shoulders, and then the right arm. You can also turn your gaze, but I cannot. <laughs> I can tell that I can't move my eyes. And then we're gonna come down in sequence. So right arm, right shoulder, right rib cage, right mid belly, low belly, bring your knee in. Bend like Karate Kid and slide back. And then we walk the blocks back and then we'll change sides. Okay. <laughs> Look, um, that wasn't part of my morning practice. So I'm improvising with you. Uh, so it's kind of fun to have a realization. Let's see how you do. If you're practicing and somebody else is there, don't fall on top of them. I can see some of you have two people in your, in your Zoom room. Okay, let's do your right leg first because that's we're looking at the stabilization of the right side than the left side and that's more customary for us so put your right foot up between the two blocks straighten the left leg don't abandon what you've been developing during this morning's practice so far so come into the ujjayi breath and listen into the back hollow of the throat And take the right block forward and to the right, left block forward. So equilateral triangle, your left block is lined up with your left shoulder. Your right shoulder is lined up with your right knee. Your right block is over to the side. So you do have a tripod right there. 
And then inhale, step forward and bring your left knee in. Okay, exhale, lengthen your left leg. So it's probably about horizontal to the floor. Tone your right outer hip, right thigh, right hamstring, right quadricep, and begin to rotate your pelvis on top of your right thigh as if you were opening a door. The door frame is stable and the door is what moves. Okay, and then rotate your pelvis, low belly, mid belly, lift your left hand off the block. Rotate your rib cage, your shoulders. If you'd like, you can raise the left arm. Anybody who would like to can also raise the gaze up towards the ceiling. And you could experiment also with taking your left arm and reaching it past your left ear. Notice the texture of the breath in the back of the throat. Notice the tone of your leg muscles supporting you. So you feel ready to, with the breath steady and the mind steady, roll your left arm down first, and then the upper rib cage, lower rib cage, upper belly, lower belly, pelvis, hug your left knee in. Bend your right knee like Karate Kid and glide the left toes back. Walk your blocks back. Step to dog pose. And then left leg forward. Okay, left block forward to the side, right block forward in line with your right fingertips and shoulder. Inhale, float up to your left leg, right knee to the chest. Maybe it touches the elbow. Exhale, lengthen your right leg straight back. Press into your hands to help stabilize. As you stack your pelvis over your left thigh, squeeze the outer left hip, outer thigh, hamstring and quads, and then turn the lower belly, mid belly, rib cage. Maybe you'll float the right arm up. You can also take the right arm and reach it past your right ear. Keep the standing legs stable, your mind stable, and the breath consistent and smooth. Roll the right arm down slow. In doing that, you might feel the myofascial stretch of the mid to lower back before you unwind the torso. And then hug your right knee in. Bend the left knee like Karate Kid. Slide the right toes back. Walk the blocks back. Downward dog pose. Over the toes, knees down, child's pose. A block for the head, elbows. Near the knees, place your palms face up. Notice what's happening inside. If you think of this as, sometimes it's called child's pose, but it can also be called um, Balasana in Sanskrit, Sanskrit, and that means happy child. Your hands back towards your knees, rise up to kneeling, and come over to sitting like this. Sit with the knees bent hips on the floor. Let's do the feet hip distance apart. Take the right hand and reach it back. Turn your fingers to point backwards, left arm forward. So with the right arm pointing back, the fingertips point towards the wall behind you. Roll your right shoulder open, raise your heart. 
and then press into both feet. Raise your hips, roll the right shoulder back here and take the left arm overhead. Keep both hips lifted to the same height as the knees. And bring your left arm across your face. Look down past your right shoulder towards the floor. Stabilize the shoulder and lower your hips down. Cross your left hand to the outside of your right knee or left elbow even can go there and twist. Roll up to center. Okay, take the left hand, point it backwards. Right arm, you can point the palm face up if you like. It's kind of a nice gesture. And then press into both feet, raise your hips. Raise the right arm. Roll the left shoulder back. Keep the left elbow and the left tricep strong. Raise both hips. So the left one tends to sag a little bit when you've got the left arm behind. And bring your right arm across your face. Look down near to the floor where the left hand is. Lower your hips down and slide your right arm to the outside of your left knee. And twist to your left. Round to face forward. Roll down vertebrae by vertebrae. Reach for the discarded blankets. Come to Shavasana. and let your mind rest so you can feel what's happening for your brain to organize these different developmental and then adventuresome movement patterns. And inside and practice ahimsa, the ahimsa of not wandering away, to not, as we say, um, squander this opportunity for shavasana. It's a deep medicine.
Are you present with your body, with your mind and your breath? Don't squander the chance to observe, to respect, to listen. present you can even imagine how your body and your brain are communicating inside hooking up the synapses and reconnecting hemispheres Make your mind be very still. One more minute. Just listening, observing.
Wiggle the fingers and the toes. The knees roll to your side. Seat, please. three rounds of Brahmari, and then we'll sit in silence. So in Brahmari, the index fingers can go above the eyebrows. The two middle fingers can close the eyes gently. The pinky is a free agent. The thumbs close the ears firmly. And three times you will sing the M sound of the Om with the lips curled into the teeth, just gently curled in. So we'll Begin, you're not gonna be able to hear me once you start. So start with your inhale and do three rounds, please. Rest your hands in your lap and sit really quietly. Simply listen. Ponder your opportunity. Listen and listen for that which is listening through you.
Yeah, right. We be able to more deeply listen today. May those around us feel the benefit of our listening. May our body also feel the benefit of our listening to it. And may this help us in uh, preventing unnecessary harm. May we not cause harm or perpetuate existing harm. Thank you everyone for being here this morning. Namaste.